Rub up your engines! I put it out, says. How do you get the best gas? Do you trust the gas station? Realize one thing. Gasoline in most area are all refined at the same refinery by one company. You live in a city, they don't have an Exxon refinery, Chevron, Shell, Mobile, BP. They don't have refineries all over the place, right? Generally, there's one in each area. They sell it to all the other companies, and then theoretically, the other companies put in their additives, which they say are different. But at the same time, they'll never tell you what exactly the additives are and how much they put in, la di da di da right? So most gas stations, you buy gas, it doesn't really matter where you buy it. It's almost we're all refined at the same stupid place, right? <laughs> Realize that. Now that said, I mean, you're out in the middle of nowhere, you see some crappy old gas station falling apart. Maybe the guys don't check the gas tanks every once in a while to see if any water got inside. I wouldn't want to buy gas there. But any modern station, you know, I really can have any problems. They check for water in it with little sticks, with little green stuff, and it changes color. They got to pump the water out. It's, it's not really something you got to worry about these days. Now, in other countries outside the United States and Canada, yeah, people tell me in India the fuel supply is horrible. So you never know there. But here, it's pretty well set. JVZ says, 87 Mercury Grand Marquis, I'd like to improve horsepower and responsiveness and make it sound better. Okay. You're not going to get much more horsepower cheap for anything. The only way you can really get horsepower is either you rebuild the engine or put on a supercharger or a turbocharging system, which is also expensive, right? Now, if you want to make it sound better, you could get mufflers and change it with a higher flow muffler, so it'll be louder, right? It's uh, 87, so it's not like the modern cars that'll trip a code and stuff. Uh, you can do that on those old ones. It isn't really going to bother the anti-pollution stuff. So you're not going to have your problems with that. Unless you make it so loud in your area, they're going to pull you over for making too much noise. You got to spend money to get horsepower. That's just the way it goes. Like that saying from the original Road Warrior, speed is just a question of money. How much do you want to spend? <laughs> Charlie says, my OH Dodge truck says to use Champion plugs. Any ideas on any other brand? Okay, here's the thing. Spark plugs are spark plugs. I suppose Champion paid them money to stick it in. Some of the foreign car manufacturers, they got paid money by Mobile One to have it stay on the engine. Use Mobile One oil. Just marketing crap. Spark plugs, you buy any decent spark plug, it's going to work on your vehicle as long as it's the one designed for your car. You go to any auto parts store these days and they'll give you a choice of half a dozen different ones that'll fit your car. They will all work perfectly fine as long as they're the right number, so they're the right heat range and the right size that fits in. That's the only thing you got to worry about. You don't have to just stick champion plugs in it. That's a bunch of nonsense. James Hall says, Scotty, help. Got no two Honda Civic. The HD blows hot air after I start it up and driving it a few minutes. Okay, it's an old Honda. First thing you want to do, Hondas have compressors that leak refrigerant faster than others. All cars leak a little bit of refrigerant if they have AC compressors that run off a belt because they have to. If that seal on the AC compressor inside where it spins was perfect and it kept everything from coming out, it would run dry and then the seal would blow and all the refrigerant leak out. So they're made to leak a little, so a little of the AC oil leaks on the seals and lubricants. Hondas leak a little faster. Have a mechanic check to see if you're just low on refrigerant. If you are, have it topped up, great. I mean, there's a thousand things that can do it. The compressor could be going out, you could have a bad switch, bad valve, but on those, the first thing with a Honda, when AC does that, just have it checked. You're probably just low on refrigerant. Add it, and then if you find out it blows cold for years and you gotta add it again, just keep adding it until the leak gets so big that you fill it up and then a few days or a week later it leaks out again then you're gonna have to fix the leak. Fresno said, my L5 Hyundai Accent, the timing belt broke off and sheared out of nowhere when I was driving down the road. Well that doesn't surprise me, Korean cars aren't that well made and it's an L5 so it's 19 years old, right? If you have a timing belt on a car it behooves you to change it once every 100,000 miles because it's just a rubber belt, eventually it will crack and then you're driving down the road and it breaks and, and a lot of times it breaks and you go down the highway pistons will hit the valves, goodbye engine, goodbye car. Most people aren't going to put another engine in. So if you got to change, you don't have to think about it. If you got a belt, have it changed every 100,000 miles. Asheville Cruising says, Scotty, are you warming up to the Tundra hybrids? No, I'm not. <laughs>
My grandson's got a regular V8 Tundra. He tows cars all over the place with his Tundra and a giant trailer. Guy that he works with has a brand new Tundra with a V6. And he tried towing all that. He said it just didn't tow the same. It didn't work right. Didn't have the oomph. Now on paper, it's got the same horsepower or even more, but that's baloney because when you're pulling stuff, it's got to take off and the turbo takes a while to kick in. No, I'm not sold on it. Tundra's a big pickup truck. Why would you remove the V8 engine? Just like they say in the Tacomas, they're going to get rid of the V6 engine and put in a turbo four. I think it's stupid. Some people want a V6 with more pulling power, and they don't like the idea of a turbo. Like, I don't like turbos either. They don't last as long. They wear out faster. And in the real world, they get worse gas mods. They can say, oh, they're rated better. Yeah, they test them on the dyno. Drive a turbo in the real world. Step on a gas, the turbo spools up, the revs go up, and you get worse gas mileage. Larry Inova says, Scotty, will you ever own an electric vehicle? How's that sound go? Never say never, whatever you say. <laughs> Probably not. I gotta say, probably. who knows what the future will be? Maybe they'll make gasoline outlaw. We gotta buy electric cars. Who knows what the future is gonna be? As it stands today, I won't buy one. If a company wants to give me one for six months, I'll try it out. Honestly, I got chargers. Charger here, that's 220. I can plug them into and I got one in Rhode Island, so I don't mind trying anything out. I'm not gonna buy one because I see them as a waste of money. They're overpriced. I don't like the setup for doing cross country driving in them. The half of searching around for a charger that actually works. Who knows what the future is going to bring if I'm still around 25 years from now. Maybe they won't be selling gasoline anymore. Who knows? But I kind of doubt it. Zombies are great, so Scotty, why do we still use pneumatic tires? Well, you know why? Because they ride well. <laughs> okay. Have you ever been in any vehicle that has solid rubber tires? Bangity, 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 bang. They ride like crap. What most people don't understand is about 90% of the shock absorbing capability of your car isn't the shock absorbers, it's your tires bouncing the sidewalls, taking all that beating, right? That's why if you've ever been in one of those stupid cars with low profile tires or the run flat tires, they ride like crap because they're much harder sidewalls. They're not as flexy as normal pneumatic tires. If they went away from pneumatic tires, unless they figured something radical out, people would be so Speed and how poorly they'd ride and handle that they'd go back to pneumatic tires. Tracy Betts says, Scotty, I want to replace my cloudy headlamps in my 2016 Corolla. Any recommendations where to buy them from? I bought mine from uh, Amazon. You know, there's tons of them out there. They're all made in China. When you do change them three or four times a year, like once every season, get this Plexus plastic spray. It's for polishing and protecting them. It protects them against UV rays and it'll last forever. You've seen the matrix that has them, which is basically a Toyota Corolla. They're still nice and clear because I spray them all the time, once every three months, four times a year, with the Plexus, let it soak on and polish them. And it keeps the UV rays from destroying them. It's simple to do. It's called Plexus, P-L-E-X-U-S. Come a little spray bottle. Stuff really works. Roger McKenna says, how many years are tires good for? Can they go past five years? Heck, I've driven some of them with 10 years, but I'm kind of crazy. What you want to do is basically look at them. If they're getting thin, you see the top of Lincoln's head, then you know, okay, it's too thin, get some new tires. And look at them with a flashlight. See if they're cracked. If they got a lot of cracks, micro cracks, time to get new tires, right? You want to watch them like that. Now, if they're not cracked and they're not worn out, you can generally go quite some time. But when they get to be older, you will start to see cracks, meaning they're not safe. Then it's definitely time to change. David Rogers says, got an 09 Chrysler Town & Country, misfire number four. I replaced the plugs, but it still misfires. Could it be a coil or injector? Well, very simple. Take the ignition coil on the number four that's misfiring, put it on number one, put one on four. Drive it. If the misfire moves to one, you know it's the coil. Voila. Pray it's that. Now, if it's not, it could be the fuel injector. You could do the same thing. You could take the injector off of that one, put it on another. It's a little bit harder work. You got to buy new seals and stuff, but you can do it. And then if it misses, then you know it's that. If not, then you're into pain in the butt land. It could be the fuel injector driver in the computer. You have to buy a new main computer. Could be your head gasket starting to blow in number four cylinder. So you'd have to do a compression test uh, to see if it's breaking down. Could be a lot of things, but pray 
it's the coil or the fuel injector itself, and that's how you test them. David Sanford said, I got a 2013 Prius, original 12 volt battery, tested good at Toyota dealer, should it be replaced? Okay, well, I don't know how they test it, right? I have really good equipment, and I would test it on mine, and it tells me this whole truth. It'll tell me what the state of charge is from zero to 100%, and what the lifespan of the battery is from zero to 100%. I generally believe when you get to 40%, lifespan left 40 or 30 get another battery what the heck why not now i don't know what kind of a test they did if they did a test like that and it was over 40 percent lifespan i'd leave it in but if not i'd replace it so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell